We are not in New York, but in northeastern France. In this episode, we will visit the charming city of Colmar. And for those who don't know yet, you will discover why there is a replica of the Statue of Liberty in the city. Let's get started. Colmar is a city located in northeastern France, specifically in the region of Alsace. It stands out for its exceptional beauty, preserved historical architecture, and rich cultural heritage. Colmar is often referred to as the capital of Alsacian wine due to its privileged location in the heart of the Alsace wine region, renowned for its world-class wines. As we can see right from the beginning of our visit, the city is characterized by its charming and picturesque streets lined with colorful half-timbered houses, flowered windows and canals. Its architectural style reflects a blend of German and French influences bearing witness to the region's rich history and cultural exchanges that have shaped it over the centuries. We now arrive at St. Martin's Church. Located in the heart of the city, this remarkable Gothic church dates back to the 13th and 14th centuries with additions and modifications over the centuries. It's an architectural and religious jewel of great historical significance. The exterior of the church features an imposing facade with typical Gothic elements such as flying buttresses, gargoyles and detailed sculptures. The colorful stained glass windows, restored in the 19th century, add a special beauty and luminosity to the interior of the church. Once inside, one is immediately struck by the height of the vaults and the grandeur of the space. It houses numerous artistic treasures, including sculptures, altars, frescoes and paintings. The impressive organ, dating back to the 18th century, is also a notable feature of the church. Whether for spiritual, historical or artistic reasons, a visit to St. Martin's Church is a must, offering a glimpse into the history and culture of the city. Leaving the church, we continue our visit and discover the locksmith streets. It's a bustling shopping district filled with small craft shops, art galleries and numerous souvenir stores. The atmosphere is warm and the authenticity of the place makes it a must-visit spot in Colmar. One can come across the Dominican church, which is a living testimony to the Gothic architecture and artistic richness of the region. This square is a venue for weekly markets, offering textiles, clothing and accessories on Thursdays and flea markets and bookshops on Fridays. The square also hosts the Easter and Spring markets as well as the Christmas markets. Several terraces enliven the square, which is crossed by a pedestrian lane. We now arrive in the Street of Heads. As we stroll along, we are immediately fascinated by the architectural details of the historic buildings lining the streets. Its enigmatic name comes from the sculptures of heads that adorn the facades of the houses, giving this street a unique and mysterious atmosphere. The House of Heads is an iconic building that intrigues and captivates. This richly decorated house is recognizable by the numerous sculpted heads adorning its facade. The house gets its name from the 106 sculpted heads representing a wide variety of human faces, animals and fantastic creatures. These detailed and expressive sculptures are artistically arranged on the wooden beams of the facade. It was built in 1609 for the wine merchant Anton Berger and is attributed to the architect Albert Schmidt, who was also responsible for the former Protestant presbytery and the house known as the Knights of St. John. The gable of the building, decorated with volutes and finials, is topped by the statue of a cooper, a work by Bartholdi, who responded to an order from the wine exchange which has moved into the building in 1898. The House of Heads underwent restoration in 2012 and today stands as a historical monument housing a renowned hotel restaurants. 
The history of the Street of Heads dates back several centuries and this street is often considered one of the oldest in Colmar. The buildings that compose it represent various architectural styles ranging from Gothic to Baroque and even Renaissance. It's a true journey through time where one can imagine the daily life of the inhabitants throughout the ages. In addition to its aesthetic appeal, this street also houses craft shops, art galleries and charming little cafe. It's an ideal place to wander, shop and enjoy the peaceful and historic atmosphere of the old town. On our walk along the Quai de la Cine, suddenly the rain starts to fall. And of course, we believed the weather forecast and didn't take the umbrellas with us. So we take shelter for a little while until the sun returns. This pathway offers a unique perspective on Colmar and invites relaxation while enjoying the serene beauty of its surroundings. The Quai is also close to several major attractions in Colmar. The Unterlinden Museum, famous for its Isenheim altarpiece, is nearby along with other historical and cultural sites. We began our visit with a nod to transatlantic history with the Statue of Liberty and there is indeed a reason for that. The Statue of Liberty is certainly one of the most well-known monuments in the world, yet few people know about its creator. In Colmar, a faithful replica of this iconic symbol proudly stands on the roundabout, recalling the close ties between Bartholdi, the famous sculpture, and his hometown. It's a poignant symbol of freedom and Franco-American friendship. A museum is dedicated to this artist, and it's a must visit to discover the sculpture's legacy. There, you can explore exhibitions that trace his life and work, including original models of the Statue of Liberty. The museum unveils the secrets behind the creation of this global icon and celebrates part of this artistic talent. We now make our way towards the Lorsch River, passing through the main street, which is a major artery that cuts through the heart of the historic city. It exudes undeniable charm and offers a true immersion into the Alsatian atmosphere. One feels captivated by the richly adorned facades, flower-filled windows, and traditional signs that create a warm and authentic ambience. We admire architectural details such as mullioned windows, wrought iron balconies, and sculptures adorning the building facades. Every corner reveals new surprises and transports us into a true fairy tale setting. Each building tells a story and immerses us in a past rich in traditions and culture. The main street is also bustling with a multitude of shops, restaurants and cafes adding to the vibrant atmosphere. We resume our visit by passing through the old custom square. Here, one can indulge in Alsatian specialties at charming traditional restaurants. It's a true invitation to discovery and culinary delights. The square is adorned with trees and a watercourse, making it a very pleasant spot. For sure, this is where we will have dinner tonight. At the end of the square, after passing several restaurants, we find the statue of Trendy, a military leader of the Empire and Lord of Hollensburg. The original fountain was demolished in 1940 during World War II. It was replaced by the current basin, which was readmitted with its original statue dating back to 1898. According to legend, the vine plant he holds would be the Toke grape variety that he supposedly brought back from his campaigns in Hungary. However, it's only a legend, as it is known that Alsatian Toke is actually a Pinot Gris grape variety that has been known in the region since the Middle Ages. The Lauch is a river that flows through the historic center of Colmar. It's one of the iconic features of the city and adds a touch of natural splendor to its urban landscape. Once again, we find colorful half-timbered houses that contribute to the charming atmosphere of this neighborhood. We discover the market building, a true culinary paradise. The stalls overflow with the local products such as cheeses, wines, fresh fruits and Alsatian specialties. We admire the reflection of the colorful houses mirrored in the calm water. It's an ideal place to relax and enjoy the peaceful atmosphere of the city. The bridges that span the lodge add to the picturesque atmosphere. Traditional boats glide slowly on the river, adding a charisma to this idyllic landscape. 
It's a central element of the city's identity, perfectly representing the harmony between traditional architecture, nature and the peaceful way of life in the Alsace region. The river has played an important role in the development of Colmar. It was used as an essential transportation route for trade and has contributed to the city's economic prosperity over the centuries. Today, it adds a touch of tranquility and serenity to Colmar's vibrant atmosphere. It's truly enjoyable to stroll along its banks. Whether for a romantic walk, a photography session, or simply to relax by the water's edge, the lodge offers an unforgettable experience in the heart of Colmar. We catch a glimpse of the statue of Bartholdi, a representation of the provost, Jean Russellman, who lost his life in 1262 while valiantly defending Colmar and its communal liberties against the troops of covetousness of the Bishop of Strasbourg. No, it's time for dinner. This visit has truly made us hungry. We still take a final stop at the Fishmongers Quay and go see the statue of the little vine grower, a copy of which was offered to the city of Princeton in the United States on the occasion of its twinning with Colmar. We also spot the mannequin piece of Colmar, which is a replica of the mannequin piece in Brussels, gifted by Belgium on the occasion of the fourth anniversary of the liberation of the city in remembrance of the common sufferings endured by the two countries. We pass by the Coifus, a classified monument of the former custom house, before having a dinner of pan-fried potatoes, sausages and bacon, and the Beckerhof. This tour through the streets and iconic sites of Colmar offer us an unforgettable glimpse into the history, culture and charm of this unique Alsatian city. If you enjoyed this visit to Colmar, subscribe and activate the bell not to miss our next episode in which we will introduce you to the other typical villages in the Alsace region. And believe us, these villages are worth a visit. See you soon for new discoveries.